land on Mars. All right, so we landed in Sulat Airport. A little bit cooler, huh? Yeah. Uh, a little bit, and we're not up in the mountains yet because the city of Delat's up in the mountains, so it takes about 25 minutes, I think, if, I'm not, if I remember correctly, to get up to the city. But we're in the, the shuttle bus, 40,000 dong per person. Now, last time we got really lucky because I refused to get on the bus, and I'll tell you why. The shuttle bus was like this. As you can see, it's packed like sardines. Yeah, have to pluck up on it's fish, fish in a can. And so last time I said, no, I, it's too full. I can't sit in there. And so they put us in a taxi for the same price. And so we got really lucky last time, but this time we're one of the fish in the can. So anyway, 25 minutes we should be in the city. They, they actually say, the lady said that the, the shuttle bus will stop at our hotel. So that's a good thing. So uh, here we go, fish in a can. checked into our room gold dream hotel now I booked this online and I'll give you the link below I think it's a pretty good deal they're still doing some work in the hotel um, but it, it's for twenty dollars a night it's really hard to be check this out we got our fan and it's cooling a lot so they probably they're putting in the air I'll show you they haven't finished yet but you really don't need it it's actually very cool but we got hot water to make coffee, F fan there, a little refrigerator, a uh, dresser, which is very rare to actually have a dresser with drawers, cabinet to hang clothes and everything, so that's cool. Big double bed or big king bed, king size bed there. Flat screen TV, good. And bathroom with giant hot water heater. And nice enclosed shower. I know some people, not me, but some people have an issue with water on the floor in bathrooms in, in Thailand. We don't worry about it. We just, it's not an issue. But here in Vietnam, I've noticed there's a lot more of enclosed showers, which a lot of people would be happy about. So. That's really good. And the best thing I like about this is check out the view. We got a view of the city here. So really nice view. The lake is off to the right. So there's a building. We can't see the lake, but we can see the downtown area, the clock tower, the circle and all that. And uh, the hillside with the hotels and everything. So that's really cool. The only thing that they don't have yet is the air here, which you can see they've actually wired but haven't installed. So there'll be an air conditioning unit here, but like I said, it's actually cool. Right now, up here, it is 73 degrees, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So really nice and cool. So we're gonna go out uh, we're going to put our stuff in the room, go out. It's now almost 11 o'clock and get something to eat. We haven't eaten today. So we're going to grab something to eat and then uh, we'll show you around a little bit more of the lot. Now this time we're here. We were here before. This time we're actually going to look for how much is an apartment going to cost, what the apartments look like. Um, just like uh, settling in here, what it would be like eating every day, using the internet, associating with the people. We're going to try and stay more away from the tourist areas so we don't get approached by the vendors all the time. 
and see what it's like if we wanted to live in Dalat, what it would be like as a ripper here. So, off to get something to eat. All right, well, we got some, some food happening here. We also had to find a lens cap. I think it was 77 millimeter lens cap because we lost it in a taxi today. So we got a lens cap for our camera, which was really good. We found a Photoshop that actually had one. So that was good. And then we were really hungry. So we found, found this place. It's got chicken soup, pho, pho ga, which is chicken. And the chicken, a lot of these places I stop the chicken, I can't eat the chicken. Well, I could eat the chicken, but it's not, not the kind of grade of meat that I eat. It's got all the bone. They just take the chicken and hack it up with the bone and everything. But this really great chicken, this is a great tasting broth. Awesome. Really good. So we're really happy that we found this place. Plus, they have something that I've never seen at a, a fur shop before. In Thailand, we call these patango, which usually are smaller, and they sell these real cheap tea with soy milk or sweetened condensed milk. Uh, but here they have it in the, in the restaurant for the fur. And so I asked him, what do you do with these? And he said, put it in the soup. So I, I tore off one, fed it to Matt and I. <laughs> And, and put it in the soup like this. And wow, is this tasty. Mm. Really great addition to the soup. So anyway, we're real happy we found the soup. And it's only 30,000. I'll put the conversion across the screen. Hey! <laughs> And one of the guys speaks, not him, but the other guy speaks really good English, too. So he might be our go-to guy when we need information and stuff now that we're in Dalat. So we find a great noodle shop and a guy who can speak English and help us out with something. So we're going to dig in because we're really hungry. It's like noon, and we've been up since 4.30 this morning. So we're hungry. How much? 70,000. 70,000. Does your shop have a name? The name in here? The name. Name? Yes. Sign? Uh, okay. 70, 50, 70. Thank you. Okay, very good. And it's got the address as well. So I'm not sure if you can see that. So if you're thinking about transportation getting around, you have a couple options. One is getting on a motorbike, and I can see why some people would be intimidated doing that. And we'll talk about driving in Vietnam on a motorbike and how to get around without getting run over and flattened like Frogger. So another thing is walking. Walking is a great option, especially in Dalat, because it's not a big city. But you got to be careful about crossing roads so you don't get hit. Now the same thing applies that applies in Thailand, and that is when you're going across a road and you're walking, you need to walk slow and deliberate all the time. Same in Thailand, same in Vietnam. The vehicles will most likely go around you, but watch and make sure. You'll be able to see, but they are expecting you, once you start, to continue. So slow and deliberate, keep eye contact with them to make sure that they're paying attention to what they're doing and cross the road. So we're gonna show you an example of that. And that's gonna be showing you the traffic and I'm gonna be guiding her so she doesn't have to watch. So we're at a zebra crossing and we're gonna start walking. Now, I wouldn't jump in front of a truck like this, but the motorbikes will go around you. So we're gonna start walking. Slow and deliberate. See, she wasn't watching. She's watching. The, the car, the truck will go around you. Look this way. And now they're going to be coming. And they're going to... Now this guy in the red is going to go in front of us. So is the white one. This guy is going to go in front of us. So you can, you sort of need to pay attention to the, the movement of the people and the momentum of the vehicle. If the momentum of the vehicle is going one direction, they're not going to suddenly, abruptly change the direction. So if they're continuing in one direction with momentum, pay attention to that and, and give them some uh, a, a wide berth. So there you go. That's how to cross without getting flat.
So Nat and I were just walking around and we spotted the dog up on the counter. It's five star chicken. One, two, three, four, five, five stars. This comes from a company called CP Chicken, CP Foods out of Thailand. So this is imported. So I was interested because I went, wow, this is the chicken we always eat in Thailand. Here they have the head on. In Thailand, they don't have the head. But this is the chicken we always eat. It's roasted chicken, very good quality, very tasty. We pay 132 baht in Thailand for the whole chicken cut up. Theirs is 170,000 for the chicken, which equates to about 260 baht, which is double the price, but remember it's imported, so maybe that's why. But CP chicken, five star. Now the word for five is ha star dao, ha dao chicken. Because it's usually so fragrant, we have a thing within the family that we, we joke about saying, we don't say ha dao, five star, we say hum dao, hum means smells good. And so we call it hum dao chicken. But anyway, five star chicken in Vietnam. Nice, same temperature almost as Hanoi, and I'll tell you, I'll give you some contrast why I got you here. Let me see if I can give you some temperature readings so you get some contrast, and you'll see one of the reasons I, I like being uh, here in Dalat. Right now, in I'll give you in Fahrenheit because it's too hard to switch back and forth between centigrade, but you probably know some of these conversions. Right now, it's 91 degrees Fahrenheit in Cha'am. Let me give you another one. In Chiang Mai, 91 degrees Fahrenheit. In Hanoi, it's 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And guess how hot? Cool, it is in the lot. It's only 71 degrees in Dalat, so you can see why I'm attracted to the weather here. It's like air conditioning. Oh, it's really nice. Um, I wanted to, to reiterate something I was talking about before in the airport before we left, and that was about the differences. I forgot to mention something, and I also wanted to elaborate on something as well. Um, when I talked about an exploding middle class in, in Thailand, they also have an exploding middle class in almost everywhere uh, around Southeast Asian and Asian countries um, because the tourism is a big boom. People are coming over here. The economies have been really strong for the last uh, years, uh, about 10 years. The economy has been really strong. What happens with the exploding middle class is a double-edged sword. All the things that were an aberration now are becoming more of the norm in Thailand uh, that we could get, um, like things for ingredients for cooking, things that you wanted to eat, um, different electronic devices, little gadgets and things. All this stuff has made it easier to live. When I first came, we barely had internet. We were struggling to get internet when I first came over here. Uh, it was very costly. And so all that has changed. So those are the good things, but along with it has come, like I said, this, uh, you know, they have a social hierarchy in Asian countries. Um, and Thailand's always been that way. You were sort of born into a higher level of the hierarchy and the social ladder. But now people who have gotten money uh, through businesses and things like that now have risen, them, risen up the ladder as well. And, of course, they look down on all the other people. So there's a change in the, in the society. And this is why I sort of stay away from those areas, like in Chiang Mai, if you went around Niemenheimen Road, um, out towards the university, that's the kind of people that's out there. You know, they drive the, the kids drive Ducatis or Mercedes or BMWs, or they all have cars for sure. Um, they won't be seen on a motorbike anymore and things like that. And so that kind of thing isn't why I came over to Asia to live. I came over because of the simplicity and the simplicity of the people and the, the simple values that they had back then. And 
I'm losing some of that if I stay around cities. That's why Nat and I travel around Thailand so much is I appreciate getting back out into areas where there's not that um, conglomeration of money, which is a lot of it surrounds tourist areas because that's where the money can be made. I think it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I forget what percentage of the GDP, and I don't want to say it if, if it's wrong, but it's a lot for tourism. Maybe I can look it up and put it on a graphic over. It's a lot. Um, and so that's also happening over in, in Vietnam. But uh, And they're just opening up. They said they're going to be trying to sell more cars to people. And right now I like it here because there's not that many cars. It's like 90% motorbikes. So even though it's a quagmire and driving is just crazy, uh, weaving in and out, it's sort of like a school of fish swimming around. Um, if you do get in an accident, Nat and I have seen accidents. In, in Thailand, you crash into somebody with your motorbike, another motorbike or whatever, and you stop and negotiate who's going to pay who. Here, people bump into the motorbike falls down. Each one looks at each other. They pick up the motorbike, and they get back on and go down the road. It's, it's, it's a little bit different, uh, and nobody's injured because it's a motorbike hitting a motorbike for the most part. Um, so that's interesting. The other thing I failed to mention about the difference was if you came over to Vietnam, it's much easier to read the signs. These words will start having representations to you and you start picking these words out. Whereas the symbols that the Thai language is based on is a little bit harder to memorize, where words that are Romanized characters would be easier to, to start uh, finding uh, familiarity with. And so those are the things that are the differences and, and uh, the changes. You might be wondering how much it costs to get here. Members are always requesting that I tell the prices of things, that it'd be good, uh, good information for you all. So I just wanted to mention this. Um, our flight from Hanoi to Dala was $85 a piece. Uh, if you book ahead of time, further ahead of time, you can get some deals on some of these flights from different companies. We flew Jetstar Pacific over here, but uh, there's a couple airlines that fly into Dala. And also the bus getting from the airport, it's about 20 minute drive by bus to get from the airport up to the, the city of Dalat, and it costs $1.75 a piece for us. So anyway, um, we're happy to be here. We're gonna be here for a little while. We're uh, sort of burnt out from traveling today. Okay, well, it is 7.30. What did we do today, Nat? We got up at like 4 a.m. And so when we finally got checked into our room, we went and got something to eat, as I showed you. And then we were tired. And it was starting to rain. It was already raining. So we had bought some, uh, we didn't even have a rain jackets with it. So we bought some of the plastic rain jackets, which were cheap. How much were the plastic coats? 30, 30, 20,000, which is about 75 cents, I guess, about US 75 cents. So she bought one, put it over, and then I bought one which was 30, which would be about 50 cents. But anyway, so we got home, then we were like, we sacked out for hours. So we're out again to get something to eat. It's still raining, and she'll show you it's still raining. But we are eating not that far from our hotel, which is, we're eating in a restaurant that's close by the night market. And the night market, they have restaurants set up side by side by side. But they're more or less for the tourists. But this was close to the hotel and it was raining, so we opted for this. And I'm not sure how much the food is going to be. Well, we've eaten here before, not at this one in particular, but in another one. And it wasn't that expensive. In fact, I saw some foreigners eating at that same one every night while we were here last time. So anyway, Nat got fried rice with shrimp, and I got egg noodle stir fried with some shrimp. So we'll let you know how much it is, and he probably even show you what it looks like. But this is eating at the market at night, at the night market. So uh, check out check out the night market. They're having hot, hot uh, suki next to us here. But this is the night market at night in the rain. 
by the way, this this restaurant actually, I think every one of these restaurants along this street here, go leading into the night market, has menus in English. So if you're if you're looking for something to eat and you don't understand the mom and pop signs, this would probably be a good option for you, especially when you first got into town and you didn't understand what anything meant on the menus, this would probably be a good option because you could read a menu in English. Always an option, right? We're hungry. Are you hungry now? Yeah. So our food hit the table. I want to show you what it looked like before we dig in. And so, thank you. So Nat's got the fried rice. Now the fried rice has never been like Thai fried rice. This is like, I forget what they called this rice. What they call it? Cut, cut rice or something? Because the, the no, in, in Da Nang. Yeah, I think they called it cut rice uh, because the, the kernels are really, really small and it doesn't really taste the way they cook it like Thai fried rice. Thai fried rice is a lot better. Anyway, so I got the, these like egg noodles. They're stir fried with vegetables and some shrimp. We'll let you know how much this costs when we get the bill, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. And no water. But Matt's going to have to doctor up that rice to make it taste good. I remember the last time we did this issue, she, she felt like rice a lot of time. When we get the rice, it was never really that flavorful, so I'd stick with the noodles. So I'll put the, the conversion on the bottom, but we can figure about 60, I think we said before 64,000 or something like that is about 100 baht. And so 100 baht is about $3 and something cents. So you can figure it out, but I'll put it at the bottom anyway. So we're going to, uh, it's not raining too hard. We might peruse around the market just a little bit and then head back to the room. So if there's something comes up in the market that I want to share with you, I'll be sharing. Good morning, Vietnam. We're in Dalat. Our first morning in Dalat slept really great with no air conditioning. It was just so cool. In fact, we didn't even have a fan on. It was so nice and cool. So we're having breakfast. I found this place on the internet, actually. And it's called One More Cafe. And uh, I'll put this up on, uh, on there. One More Cafe came recommended by a lot of people, and I can understand why. You can walk from the center of the city to get up here as well, but let me tell you what we've got. We've got a killer breakfast. I, there were just things on the menu. There's sometimes I'll see something on the menu and I go, I gotta have it because it's something I never have very rarely. So today's one of those days. We got some really cool stuff I wanna share with you and the price is that one more cafe. First of all, it's air conditioned. It's nice and quiet. Actually, there's you might be able to hear a little sound from outside of the of the, the traffic but it's really nice ambiance and it's got some music in the background so what do we got let's get to the food let's get to the important stuff we i have my coffee my hot coffee drip coffee vietnam drip coffee here and it is a uh, dollar 15 for the coffee with milk which is a little bit pricey but it's a nice ambiance so we'll go with that and how you do this actually is after it drips, you take the top and you put it down and set this on top in case there's some extra uh, coffee dripping through. And then just mix up. They'll put a little sweet milk in the bottom of it and mix it up. Speaking of that, I'm going to try and find another egg coffee today, Nat. A Vietnam egg coffee. Cafe Trung, I think they call it. Trung. I don't know if they have them in the lot, but we're going to try it. By the way, I thought about what that tasted like the other day. Um, if this was supposed to have milk, I don't think they put milk. And can I have some milk? No milk. Thank you. So anyway, it was supposed to be hot coffee with milk. So anyway, the coffee. 
Matt has a mulberry smoothie, which is tasty, but for some reason it came it wasn't cold. But very tasty. Mulberry smoothie, which is two dollars. Then we have this pumpkin soup. And this is really great. I'll show you the picture that I took of this. So and I haven't tasted it yet, but again it comes highly recommended. And so we're gonna give this a little taste test. That's some interesting flavor. It's a little bit spicy. I've had some in Thailand that was actually better pumpkin soup, but it's tasty. It comes with some fresh bread, and that is $2.25 for the soup. Then Nat's got a sandwich here, the baguette, and inside has two fried eggs, bacon, and thank you. Can I cut it? Yeah, that's fine, thanks. Uh, two fried eggs, bacon, and on the roll. So that's what's in there, bacon, eggs, and the baguette. And I have eggs benedict, a big splurge today, eggs benedict on toast with salmon, and it's five dollars. Her sandwich was two dollars and 70 cents. The, the salmon is five dollars, which is pricey for breakfast for us, because we usually go with something real inexpensive and, and local. But I had to check the place out. I had to try some of these things on the menu. The pumpkin soup came recommended, and I wanted to try that. After I have a few more bites, maybe it'll, it'll grow on me, but let me try it. Mm. That's okay. But there you go, our breakfast at One More Cafe. So we're gonna dig in before it gets cold. Just wanted to share with you some prices if you got off the street, off the local little open air restaurants for Vietnamese breakfast, and you wanted a Western breakfast or something different, One More Cafe would be a great option. I have to taste test my, my baked Benedict here. If it's got a good hollandaise sauce. Hollandaise is uh, one of my favorite sauces. Mmm, nah, that's good. All right, talk to you later. If you look around in any city in Thailand or Vietnam, any small city, the hub of activity is always in the fresh markets or in the marketplace. And I perused through this market one time, just a little bit last time I was here. This time we're walking around getting more of a, a feel for what's going on. Anything you're looking for or need can be found in these markets. Clothing, shoes, food products, all those are in the market in these types of places. There's even a little food court. Hey JC here. If you like that video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here. Also, we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well. And if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place, plus a group of people to support you, check this out over here. Give it a click.